Most of us will agree finance or investment can be very complicated. It's not just the advanced mathematics or algorithmic models that go into it, but the number of tools or the combination of tools that could be used to hopefully correctly predict their investment position or idea, and ideally earn some profit in the long run, and it's definitely not easy. In most cases, you or any investment professionals can take either side of the two extremes or opposite positions. Like you can be a buyer of a particular security trying to find a seller in the market or you can be in between trying to buy something and sell something at the same time. This has to do with the unique property of money that it is a medium of exchange. A trade only happens when a buyer and a seller meet. In this video, we will look at five extremes or opposites in finance. Hopefully, it can give you a bigger picture of how complexity lies in between financial structure of extremes that economists, scholars, investors, and others built over the years and how we are constantly finding a balance. The first one is the buy and sell. In the financial market, there are tons of available financial products Products available right now. You can buy and sell company stocks, bonds, government bonds, and if you're particularly concerned of inflation, there's a thing called inflation protected bonds. If you feel like people in the investment community are becoming more uncertain, perhaps predicting more volatility in the upcoming month, that the prices of stocks are going to move more than average, there are products like VIX futures or ETFs that professionals can buy. Just different types of products for different scenarios. In most cases, people will buy investment if they think the value will go up and sell when they think the value is going to go down. Institutional investors like big hedge funds or banks will have millions or billions of dollars in investment, for example, in just one particular trade. So if they want to protect their investment position, they could either sell the investment, protecting their position from the value going down further, or buy products that could safeguard their investment. For example, they may buy something called a CDS or credit default swaps to protect their investment. These type of financial products tend to be very costly but their value will go up as the value of the investment goes down. Two completely opposite positions, a buy and a sell, but for similar purposes. In this case, safeguarding the investment if the value were to go down. Similar to buy and sell, an investor can take a long or short position. Most of the time, we see articles or industry people talk about the terms interchangeably. Buy and long usually mean the same thing and sell and short usually mean the same thing. For example, if you're long a Microsoft stock, you'll be buying the stock pretty straightforward. However, with shorting, if you were to short a Microsoft stock, in most cases you'll be borrowing a Microsoft stock, selling the stock at a high price and hoping to buy back at the low price to repay the stock back to the lender. So you have profit when the price goes down and you earn the difference after prices. So opposite to a long position, you have profit when the stock price goes down with shorting. The strategy is designed so that people can earn either way not wasting any opportunity. You may have come across the towns bull and the bear market somewhere in the financial articles and news outlets. And if we zoom out a little bit and think about the price of a stock, it can only move up, move down, or stay the same. With all the data analysis, AI trading algorithms, and cross-referencing of the chart, are all just trying to predict either of the three directions, where the stock is going and the degree of how far it can go. According to the SEC, that's US Securities and Exchange Commission, you can think of it as the boss of the financial market in the US. They claim the bull market is when stock prices are rising, generate a rise of 20% or more in a broad market index over at least two months. The broad market index, for example, in the US, it can be the S&P 500. In the UK, it can be the FTSE 100, etc, etc. You can see from this chart made by Bloomberg, the S&P increases on average with relatively strong bull markets over the years. They use the bull to describe the uprising stock market because when it attacks, it uses its horns to attack in a powerful upward motion. Whereas when a bear attacks, it raises its paws from up to down motion to attack. Opposite to the bull market, a bear market is when stock prices decline over 20% or more for at least two months. So a sudden drop in one particular company stock would usually not be considered as a bear market. Continuing with the theme of the macroeconomics, 
that terms hawkish versus dovish are often used to describe the Fed decision or the members of the Fed. The Federal Reserve or the Fed decides on the interest rate eight times a year. Interest rate affects the cost of a borrowing and prices of most financial products especially bonds. So many investors, traders, speculators will analyze how hawkish or dovish the Fed decisions will be, or more precisely, how dovish or hawkish the Fed members are, as they're the ones who will be voting on the rates. So I've been wondering where the names come from. A hawk watches small birds or its prey very closely with lots of attention, tries to catch its target more aggressively than a doe, which is generally more at peace, more peaceful. We describe policy makers that take a more aggressive approach, like having a high interest rate to lower the inflation rate, despite having the potential of lowering the economic growth as hawkish. And those who are less aggressive, keeping the rates low, hoping to encourage more job opportunities and economic growth as dovish. But ideally in the free market, it's really up to the businesses and consumers to decide on the price of products that we buy. And the final one is the bid and the ask. When trading more liquid, transparent financial products like stocks, the trading platform will show you a list of bid prices. That's a price someone is willing to buy the stock at. And the list of ask, that's a price someone is willing to sell the stock at. And when a buyer meets a seller at the same price, that's when the transaction will occur. It's applicable to any market that has a collection of sellers and buyers. For example, recently I traveled to another country, so I had to change my currency to the local currency. Usually you change currencies at the bank or currency counter as we see inside the airports. The foreign exchange rate that we see on the news is the spot exchange rate. So when we want to exchange our currencies, we need to look at the bid and the ask that the bank of our choice offer. In most cases, they will have a currency column and the columns for we buy and we sell. The we will be referring to a bank. So like in this case, we want to change our currency, let's say to Japanese yen. So we want Japanese yen, for example, if we're traveling to Japan, we'll be looking at the we sell column as we are buying the Japanese yen and the bank will be selling the Japanese yen to us. The rate changes every second or so, and the rate will be slightly different between different banks and different exchange counters, depending on the transaction fees or the fees that they are charging. These are five of the common opposite terms used in finance and economics. In most cases, professionals will use mixture of everything, deciding between the two extremes. This video is not to advise, encourage, or recommend any investment, just some of the terms that show up and discuss often in news or articles. As always, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.